This is the Fluid Builder app, and it's live today on the Webflow app marketplace. It allows us to easily set Fluid font sizes and preview them in real time for our Webflow project. Webflow just released breakpoint sizes for their variables, meaning we can reduce a variable across each breakpoint. For Webflow projects, I still recommend fluid sizes instead of breakpoint sizes though. And one of the key reasons for this is accessibility. For a font size to be accessible, the user needs to be able to double it without it overflowing. And here with our breakpoint size, we'll notice it overflows because Webflow breakpoints are set with pixels instead of rim. So instead of it switching us to the next breakpoint like it normally would, increasing the font size just keeps us on the desktop breakpoint indefinitely, and we never see the changes designed for smaller screens. Fluid sizes can fix this though because they're not based on breakpoints. They can bypass that altogether. The first time we open the Fluid Builder app, it'll create a component to store all our Fluid CSS. It's important that we do not rename this component because the next time we open the app, it'll look for this name. We also want to include this component on every page of our site or inside a global component like a navbar so that every page has access to this. From there, we can select the variables that we want to make fluid, like this h1 font size. We can set what we want its size to be on desktop and what we want its size to be on mobile. So this font size will be 100 pixels at our 1440 screen size. And when we reach a 320 pixel screen size, it'll scale down to a 30 pixel font size here. Now we are getting an accessibility error saying this does not pass accessibility because the difference between these two sizes is too extreme. So when a user reaches max browser zoom, this font size will not be twice its original size. If you'd like to learn more about the math behind this, this uh, button links out to an article that goes into that. But for now, we'll go ahead and just increase this min font size. Now, if we put our two screen sizes closer together, we could run into an accessibility warning depending on the font size we're using. And that just means this font size is shrinking down too fast. So while it technically does pass accessibility, the first couple of times the user zooms, it'll appear to decrease from an increased zoom, which isn't the best UX. So it's better just to push these min and max screen sizes further apart so we don't run into that issue here. Now we can select any other variable we want to make fluid like this container padding. And for this one, I'm really not gonna worry about too much if we run into that accessibility error because this is not a font size, so we do not need to double it. So it's okay here if the scale is more extreme for any spacing related sizes, but for font sizes, we definitely want to keep that in mind. Now we usually want our max screen size to match our max container width and web flow. So in this case, our container stops scaling up at 65 rim, which is 140 pixels. So I'll go ahead and change my max uh, sort of screen size here to match my max container width. So they stop scaling up at the same time. Now, one thing to note about this uh, warning here is even with breakpoint sizes, this rings true. If we have our max and our min font sizes are too different, we could run into that error. So even if you use breakpoint sizes, I would keep this in mind here. Now, one other thing we can do is we might want to move these variables across groups. Maybe we want this container to stop scaling sooner than the actual font sizes. So what we can do is just open up the settings and choose a different max and min screen size for this variable specifically. And once I hit enter, it moved it here into its own group. I can continue adjusting this. Um, I could go ahead and move it back into this group by just matching up the values here if we'd like. But that's how to make certain variables stop scaling at different points here. Another thing to keep in mind is at the time of recording this video, any variables that are in a separate collection, Webflow does not allow us to get that collection name. So if you do have any variables like that, you may need to manually type their variable name. We can just click on any of these variables here and change the name. So I might have a, a collection for typography and in that I might have an H1 sort of font size. So we might have to manually type out that variable name for variables that are in separate collections. If we delete this here, it's not deleting the variable from the variable panel, it's just deleting the fluid size that was inside of this sort of style tag here. So that's how to use the Fluid Builder. I hope it really helps you out in your projects.